Hi everyone, this is Jack from Historical Archery and today we're going to be reviewing this Ottoman bow made by a Korean maker, uh, Daylight Archery. They made a 50 pound at 28 inch bow for me to review. Uh, 52 inch length, I'll try not to pull further than 28 inches. It's an Ottoman Turkish bow, this is not designed for 34 inch swallows. Um, one of the biggest advantages of these short bows is just how compact it is for switching weapons. Um, to switch to a spear, to switch to a sword and shield, you're much more flexible with this than a longbow. For horseback use, this is perfect. You can have something this small and do many things shooting 360 degrees, not a problem. Of course, I can shoot the other side as well. It's much more difficult to switch weapons, especially on horseback, because what are you gonna do with this giant bow and then switch to a spear? It's doable, but it's much more convenient with a small little Turkish bow than something this because if you want to switch to a spear, you already have a spear, but that doesn't really work as a spear. So it's kind of a hassle to switch to, to, to a melee weapon, especially spears. Swords, yes, you can switch to a sword more, more conveniently, but with the Turkish bows, you get a lot more options, especially when you're wearing armor. You want, you know, as little obstructions as possible. With these long bows, sometimes these spears will stick out and it will hit the spear. It's just not 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 pleasant to be switching weapons with. You gotta keep in mind a lot of these archers used melee weapons as well. Um, often not designed to but you know in emergency they're gonna have to switch to a spear immediately. And then I knock draw and I loose. Just like that. But it, the spear doesn't affect me. And oh I see a cavalry charge going on and then I pull it right away, things like that. Or an ambush, you got a melee weapon. Or you can switch immediately to a sword, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, and you can have a shield in your back as well. Be nice to mix up with these weapons. So it's really cool to have um, these Turkish bows. The long bows, they're just uh, more obstructive with switching weapons. You know, it's a Turkish bow. It's not designed to get that long draw on. Oh. I gotta say, this helps me improve my accuracy by really aiming at small objects. It's a fairly short distance, but you know, I was never known as an accurate archer. I'm I'm the warble guy, you guys know that. Oh, I hit it! Hold on. Okay, well, I hit the, tim uh, the cup. I'm gonna try with the javelin, see if I can hit the target, the cup. I highly doubt it, but I just wanna see if I can hit that foam. In terms of its shape, I think Daylight Archery did a very good job at making a laminated Ottoman bow. Uh, this, of course, is not horn and sinew, and Daylight Archery don't make those anyways. Um, and the lamination structures is quite classic for Daylight Archery. You got fiberglass on the back and the belly, and then there's a layer of carbon on the backing, and then you get the Canadian maple. And then finally, you get the fiberglass on the on the belly, like I said. Uh, so it's a good combination for making laminate bows, and they don't cheap out on materials and the glue. They do a good job at making sure the glue really secures with the lamination layer. And that's what something I really respect about Daylight Archery. Um, their quality is good. I've never had a problem with any of their bows, and I put many many rounds on all of them. Um, I've had problems with Indonesian bows. I've had problems with Chinese bows. I've never had problems with Daylight Archery. I've never had problems with. Um, Freddy Archery. I've never had problems with Korean bows, so um, this is something that I really like. Now, the tips. This is plastic, not bone, as well as the tips here. Horn. It looks like horn. It's a composite resin, um, so there's no horn or bone. It looks like it, though, but um, these tips are synthetic materials. Why bother with that when the whole thing is synthetic in the first place, right? You know what I mean? Let's try to hit that Tim Hortons cup right there. If you can see it, the coffee cup in the ground. On the left, about a few inches, two inches, to the left of the Tim Hortons cup. A little bit to the right of the cup. Let's do some speed shooting according to Arab archery, four fletch and knots like this, but not Slavic draw, thumb draw, as implied by the author. Because they say Slavic draw is peculiar, but that means thumb draw is standard even for speed shooting or else the author would have mentioned something that hey this is peculiar to speed shoot with Slavic draw but the author didn't mention that
So I put about 500 rounds now, and I think I could give a better opinion about this boat. Um, for one, it hasn't broken yet. Uh, that's good. And no issues I've had so far. Yes, the leather gets worn out after that many shots. In fact, I had the tape was wearing out so quickly that I have to keep replacing it with tape, but then the tape keeps wearing out again, and eventually it wears out the leather. Um, but that's also why I use tape, so I try to wear out the leather less, but eventually I just give up. Okay, we're wearing out the leather now, but that's fine. This is normal wear and tear on a boat, so that's fine. And no, I don't like ray skin. There's no point putting ray skin on a boat like this, in my opinion, because it's, it's, it, this is a, you know, a target practice boat for shooting. It doesn't need that. Yes, ray skin lasts a lot longer, but tape is super cheap, and you put it on, and then when it wears out, you just put another one. I like tape, it's cheap. So, you can do Mediterranean draw if you want, you know, your thumb gets sore, do a Slavic draw, and it still shoots. And it's one of my more accurate bows, too. Um, the ones with the shelf is more accurate, in my opinion, but these, they got a pretty narrow shelf, and it's pretty accurate, and it's just so cute. I love the packaging, I love the size. I don't think this is as durable as an Ali Bull fiberglass ball. Those you can literally whack it and it probably will work. But this, um, it's much lighter, performs better. The thing is, when you get it in your hands, will it delaminate? I don't know. These are things that are hard to say. But Daylight Archery does offer warranties, so keep that in mind. Check it out uh, on their website and make sure uh, you got the warranty covered. And that's what I like about these Korean bows. They really care about their products and they take pride in it. And even if it's not a Korean bow, they still put a lot of effort making these. Now, interestingly, these are both Turkish style bows, but you gotta keep in mind the Turks use all kinds of bows. Um, but this is a Daylight Archery and this is the uh, Care Bows. And they're similar price. The Daylight's a little cheaper. Um, but the hybrid here, I wouldn't take it out shooting all the time. This is more of a something to show to a medieval fair, be like, hey, this is what a Turk or Persian bow looked like. Um, of course, the fiberglass is hidden, so you can't see it, but uh, they would use sinew instead, things like that. But then this one is more of a modernized version. They don't try to make it look historical. It's laminate with fiberglass and the wood uh, clearly shown. Uh, not trying to be a historical bow. So it's nice to have both of these. This one I probably shoot three times in a medieval fair, and then this time, uh, this one I put 100 rounds in, and uh, not care because it's just it's a it's a bolt that you put mileage on, you know. This is something you go take out to a car show, so that's basically how these bows are. Even though both are Turk bows, keep in mind the Turks have a wide variety of bows. Some are more static at the tips that look more like Mughal and Persian bows, but then you got other ones that are much lighter here, um, more optimized for flight archery. So um, keep that in mind as well.